Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, we'll begin our service then by singing uh, the brightest and best, hymn number 400. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. And are acquainted with all my ways. Even, Even before a word is on my tongue. Before the word is on my tongue. You hem me in behind and before. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the animal's parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, and you called me. But he met, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli, Eli told Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin his, he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for the sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What is it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you be it ever so severely, if you hide anything from me, he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as the prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
The epistle reading for this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything, you say. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immortality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from, free, uh, flee from sexual immortality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip and Nathaniel uh, found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is no, nothing false. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue by singing our hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, almost 2,000 years before Jesus was born, Jacob, the son of Isaac, Abraham's grandson, sets out for a trip to find a wife among his distant relatives. And along that trip, at night, he stops to make camp. He pulls up a rock to use as a pillow. He lays down and he goes to sleep. And while he sleeps, as we read in Genesis, he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there were angels of God who were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and of God of Isaac, the land on which you lie. I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. God revealed himself to Jacob in this dream and showed him the ladder to heaven, the connection between God and man. Angels ascend and descend on that ladder, and the Lord God himself stands at the top. Today in our gospel reading, we see Jesus reveal himself to be that ladder, Jesus is our connection between heaven and earth. He's our connection between God and man. Jesus is your connection and my connection to God, our Father in heaven. Now he tells Nathaniel, Most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus promises Nathanael that he will see in the flesh what his ancestor Jacob saw only in a dream. Jesus promises Nathanael that he will see heaven open. He promises Nathanael that he will see the ladder to heaven who is the Son of Man with the angels ascending and descending on him. With this promise, Jesus promises Nathanael everything he promised Jacob back 2,000 years before when Jacob had his dream. Now Jesus promised Nathanael that he would see what Jacob saw. And today Jesus makes that same promise to you. You will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus promised Nathanael that like Jacob, through him and his seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And today he makes that promise to you also. By your faithfulness, you and the generations of your family will be a blessing to all. Jesus promised Nathanael that he would be with him and keep him wherever he goes. And today he makes that promise to you also. Jesus is your Emmanuel, the God who is with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And Jesus promised Nathanael that he would bring him to the promised land where God and man once more live together. And today again he makes that promise to you. By his grace, Jesus will bring you to the promised land of the new heavens and new earth, where he will on the last where he will keep us always in him, and where we will be his people, and he will be our God. God's promises to Jacob in his dream are Jesus' promises to Nathaniel as they meet, and they are also Jesus' promises to you and to me right here today. And yet sometimes we have doubts. God is going to open up heaven 
and show me the angels and the Son of Man? God is going to bless the world through me and my family? God is going to be with me wherever I go? God is bringing me into the promised land of the new heavens and new earth? Really? Sounds a little bit like Nathaniel, don't you think? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's what he said. Well, something good has come out of Nazareth. Jesus Christ, our Lord. He has come out of Bethel, where Jacob saw him in his dream. He has come out of Nazareth. Where he grew up as a child, he has come out of Judea, where he relaxed, uh, revealed himself to Nathaniel, and now he comes to you right here. He has come to forgive you your doubts and strengthen your faith in his promises. He has come to make his promises to you again to this, this day, and he has come to seal those promises in the blood and with his very own life that he gave up on the cross for you. Jesus has come to open heaven up to you. He has come to bless you and yours through your faith. Jesus has come to make his home with you wherever you might be. And he has come to bring you, body and soul, into the promised land of the children of God. Do not doubt Good things do come out of Nazareth. Good things do come to you. They come from Jesus and from no other. And on the last day, Christ will come out of heaven. He will return in all his glory, and he will come with blessings to your grave. He will raise you up in glory, and he will come with blessings uh, that he brought to our brothers Jacob and Nathaniel, And we will see the fulfillment of his promises with our own two eyes. We will see heaven open as Jesus comes down on clouds of glory. We will see heaven opened that we may enter into the holy place by his blood. Heaven opened that by faith we may look in and at length may even go in may now behold the glory of the Lord and hereafter enter into the joy of the Lord. Then we shall see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Though Christ, through Christ we have communion and in benefit, and we also have, are benefited by the holy angels and things in heaven and things on earth are reconciled and gathered together as they watch over us and protect us and serve God in all every way. Christ is to us as Jacob's ladder, by whom angels continually ascend and descend for the good of the saints, that is, for you and for me. We will see what eternal life looks like and receive that blessing from his gracious heavenly hand. We will see in all his splendor the glory of the mansions of the Lord as Christ welcomes us into his eternal home. And we will see forever the beauty of the promised land. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You bet. It can. The best thing. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of Man and Son of God, has come out of Nazareth and open the way to everlasting life to all of us. He will come again out of heaven. He will come with his angels. He will come with all his power, might, and heavenly glory. And he is going to remove all doubts. He is coming to fulfill all his promises. And he is coming to take you and me to live in the house of the Lord forever. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have called us into fellowship and priesthood of your Son, Jesus Christ. By his incarnation and great work of salvation, heaven is open to us in him. Give us boldness to cling to your faithful call, that your deliverance would not be hidden but spoken freely in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, preserve your church here and throughout the world. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those you have sent, especially our synodical president, our district president, and all those who serve according to your word, uh, the church on earth. Be with also those who serve in foreign countries and, in, 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 and throughout the world especially Jana Engelhardt and Josh Lang and family. Continue to bless them and keep them faithful in the callings you have given to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us your Holy Spirit, making our bodies your temple and knitting us together into the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us courage and, consist and constancy to treasure your gift of holy marriage. Preserve your Christians in true chastity, the married in honorable faithfulness to one another, and the unmarried in honorable purity. For you have bought us with the precious price of your Son's blood to glorify you in our bodies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you, have, you are the Lord, and you do whatever is good and right for us according to your good will. As every law authority on earth comes from you, uphold in righteousness and help our nation and its leaders. Preserve in wisdom our president and vice president, our president-elect and vice president-elect, and all those who serve in the government and government positions. Be with all those who serve the public in, in any way, including the armed forces who protect us, police who also protect us, and fire uh, those who work on fire departments and those in first, who are first responders, along with all health care workers and all who care for us in any way. Send peace in our time, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, behold in mercy all for whom we pray. For Nadine Petrosky, Kristen, Dylan, Gary Brunsbach, Pearl Abrahams, Elaine Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Bob Anderson, Bill Berry, Judy Johnson, Mark Weiler, Heather Wolfel, Doreen Meyer, Sylvia Shademan, Steve Benny. Be with them and bless them and keep them always in your protective care. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, renew the gift of your Holy Spirit to all who commune this day. Work in us true contrition to lament and abandon our sins, and so to come in confident faith to eat your Son's body and drink his blood, given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, make us bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he is not
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament, for the forgiveness of our sins and for life everlasting. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love and love to one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.